Thanks for watching this video tutorial. It is a free sample from our course, The Ultimate Introduction to V-Ray 4 3ds Max. Make sure to visit our website, mographplus.com, and check the entire course out. This is a massive 17 hour long course. That's 1,030 minutes of high quality and academic video tutorials on V-Ray. Now, let's get started with this video tutorial. Another very exciting feature of VR 3.5 is resumable rendering. And basically this is the ability to resume incomplete renders where they left off from a previous session. So with this feature, the render can be stopped for any reason like power outage or your own desire to stop the render and maybe doing something else on your machine and resumed later on from where you left off earlier. Now let's see how this feature works. This is the scene we are going to be working with and this is from the physical camera lesson from chapter 6 of this course and it is also available with the project files for this uh, update as lesson 03. So this update is chapter 10 of the course and this is lesson uh, 03. Now let's open up our render settings. The first thing you need to do is to define where you want to save your render. Uh, you can use your uh, render output section of the common tab or use VRA raw image file or separate uh, render channel section of the uh, frame buffer rollout under VRA tab. In this case, let's enable VRA raw image file as we have been using it to save our renders throughout this course. Click on this browse button. Let's go to this deleted folder on my desktop and let's name it resumable underscore test and choose EXR as the format to save as. If you are using the common tab or separate render channels section here to save out your render, you can choose any file format like PNG or uh, JPEG to save out your render and you still can resume your render later on. In this case, we choose EXR. The next step would be to enable resumable rendering down here. And that's it. Now, as you can see in my image sampler rollout, I'm using bucket image sampler. And in the GI tab, I'm using brute force and light cache as my primary and secondary GI engines. Now we can go ahead and actually start our render. Now let me wait for the light cache. Now we can actually wait for a few buckets to be rendered. Okay, now that these buckets are rendered, we can go ahead and stop the render and see if we can resume it later on. So I'm gonna stop the render. Let's close 3ds Max and make sure to save the file. Now before uh, starting 3ds Max again and hopefully resuming the render, if I go to the folder where we wanted to save our render as an EXR, which was this deleted folder on my desktop, you can see we don't have that EXR file yet because the render has not finished completely, but we have this VRA image file or VRIMG that's called resumable underscore test dot zero 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 dot VRIMG. And this file contains the data from the completed render buckets and also the light cache information. So we don't have to recalculate our light cache again when we resuming our render. Our primary engine was brute force that does not require any recalculations. That's good. But if we were using Iridian Map as our primary GI engine, uh, when we actually start resuming the render, V-Ray will recalculate the Iridian Map for the entire image again before resuming the render. So that's one downside of using Iridian Map when wanting to actually resume your render. Now let's start 3ds Max again and open up our scene and see if we can resume the render or not.
Now, because we are using Bucket Image Sampler, we cannot change any settings between stopping and resuming a render. If it was Progressive Image Sampler, we could have increased the Image Sampler settings between stopping and resuming, but that is not the case when using Bucket Image Sampler. Now, let's start rendering the scene and As you can see, uh, the render resumes and we have our completed render buckets from our previous session. And we continue from there, from where we left off, and that's very exciting and extremely useful new feature in V-Ray 3.5. So that's enough, let me stop the render here. And if I wanted to, I can simply resume the render again, right? Let's go to the render setting again. Uh, if we were using progressive image sampler instead of bucket image sampler, the process for setting up resumable rendering would be exactly the same. But instead of that temporary .vrimg file, a temporary .vrprog or progressive, uh, file would save the progressive rendering progress and you can resume your render based on that after stopping your render file like we did here. Uh, when using progressive sampler, there is another option in the resumable rendering subsection and that's this autosave interval which is based on minutes. And if I quote the help documentations, uh, this value specifies an interval in minutes for saving resumable files during rendering applies only for progressive sampling. Bucket renderings are saved on every completed bucket. A value of zero disables autosaving during rendering and resumable files will be saved only at the end of the rendering." End of quote. So uh, setting the autosave interval parameter is really, really important uh, for progressive renders. So V-Ray can actually write out the .vrprog file during rendering in case the process uh, is unintentionally stopped. Uh, so make sure to absolutely enable this value and set it to something like maybe 5-10 minutes when you are using progressive rendering and wanting to resume your render later on. Uh, also try not to set this value to a very small value like two or three minutes because in every interval the rendering data need to be saved on the .vrprog file and that's going to slow down your render. Something like five or ten minutes as I mentioned seems to be a good number. Uh, now if you wanted to change something in your scene and start your render from scratch, uh, simply delete the temporary .vr image or .vrprog file and start the render again. And this will start render from scratch because there is no resumable data in that case. And to disable resumable rendering completely, just disable resumable rendering option in the frame buffer rollout. So that's about resumable rendering in V-Ray 3.5. See you in the next lesson. Thanks for watching this video tutorial. It was a free sample from our course, The Ultimate Introduction to V-Ray for 3ds Max. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out. This is a massive 17 hour long course. That's 1030 minutes of high quality and academic video tutorial. See you next time, guys.